Thanks very much, John. And now, just so we'll know, St. Patrick's Day is not really over. Here is an Irish woman to tell us how completely wacky some of our environmental people in Pennsylvania are when they are attacking the one thing that is reviving Pennsylvania's economy. Anne? Thank you. Good morning. Um, some of you haven't heard me before. I, I'm, my name is Anne McElhenney. I'm, I'm a recovering European. Uh, God bless America. Um, uh, I'm very grateful. I'm, I'm, I probably, at the PLC, may be one of the only people who's not an American, and I'm very sorry about that, but I do have a visa, uh, um, and I'm really hoping to change that. I, when Michael Moore moves to Cuba with his mother, um, I'm going to be taking his spot here. Um, <laughs> Um, honestly, you can't find a greater supporter of this country than me, and it seems to be now my job to go out there and explain to young people in America who are doing advanced anti-American studies at high school and at university how exceptional and wonderful this country is. And I find a new reason every day to love the country even more. I mean, I am such a lunatic. I go to Costco and take photographs of the food. That's me. <laughs> uh, Dover sold for $3.50 a pound. For those people who cook, you really understand what that means. It's amazing. This is an exceptional country. And uh, one of the re recent things I discovered, which, funny enough, not enough Americans know, and I, ho I hope I can inform you of something that you didn't know today. And for those of you who do know this, well, shout it out louder. America is the only country on the planet Earth where individuals can own mineral rights. Did you know that? Did everyone know that? The only country. In every other country in the world, mineral rights are owned by the Queen, by the King, or by the government. And I think the reason that America is so extraordinary and that you have so many extraordinary people and that your politics is still sensible is for that very reason, because people own what's under their feet. I have a very unusual niche in life. I don't know, you know that thing of when you're kind of growing up and you, you, know, you think your life is going to turn out one way and you look back at a certain stage and think, God bless us, how did I get here? Well, I spend most of my days thinking, how did I get here? You know, 10 years ago, my description of you, you wouldn't have liked. I thought you were right-wing nut jobs. I thought that you homeschooled children, which made you kind of weird. Uh, and I had a conversion experience. I had an extraordinary experience that changed everything. And I think it's, it's instructive, because I think I'm, I'm a nice person, and I think most people are nice and are good at heart. But no one ever told me about capitalism. I was 38 years old, and I had never heard of it. Only that it was, you know, that businesses were run by, basically, by serial killers, rapists, you know, people who basically, you know, mining was done by people who go out with large buckets and spread arsenic on the land. You know, that's who they were. That's, what, that's all I ever knew. Until I did a story, I was a journalist, I did a story in Romania about a gold mining company trying to open a mine uh, up in Transylvania. And two environmentalists, two foreigners, went in there and stole the dreams of a very, very impoverished uh, community. And I became a looper for capitalism. I became a lunatic for capitalism. And if you're not a lunatic for capitalism, we're all in real trouble here. <laughs> so as I said, you look back and you think, oh my God, how did I get here? And what it is, what do you do in life? I suppose my, my mission now in life and my major job in life is calling out environmentalists. That's kind of my major mission. And then my secondary thing is going around telling everyone how, mar how marvellous America is and basically slapping people in pubs who say anything different. Um, and uh, I know that Frank Luntz said last night that we're all meant to be really nice to each other and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, nah, nah. <laughs> Not so much. No, no, I just really like to take out environmentalists and I really like to take out lefties who talk absolute nonsense. And I just wish they'd all move to the rainforest and burn their American passport if it's so terrible here. Just move to the, move to the rainforest. Move to the rainforest. If you think it's so lovely to live back to nature, organic, all that rubbish, try it. And don't do it as a holiday. Don't go on holiday to the rainforest. Go there permanently.
Just try that electric, electricity-free lifestyle. You will be screaming for America. My God, you'll be screaming for the air conditioning. So this is what I do for a living. So basically, I call out environmentalists, and it's great fun, because I used to believe that environmentalists wore woolly jumpers, and they wore sandals, and they had facial hair, and they were really nice, and they cared about stuff that I was far too lazy to care about, because all I cared about was finding the next beer. So, <clears throat> and then I became this other person and realized that the enemy of the poor Environmentalists are the enemy of the poor. So if you care about human rights, if you care about human rights, if you care about poor people, if you care about poor people, you need to go out there and fight and tell the truth and take out environmentalists and, to, and stop them in their tracks every time they tell a lie. And that brings me to why I'm here and why I'm in this wonderful state of Pennsylvania. God bless you. And thanks a million for inviting me, by the way. And I, can I see how incredibly happy I am for you here in Pennsylvania, for the people of Ohio, for the people of Wyoming, for the people of North Dakota and Colorado and Southern Texas who have discovered under their feet such a mystery, such a wonder, such a miracle. Such a miracle, but guess what? My God, fight for it because there's people who will take that away from you. And they'll do it very effectively. And here's what I'm here to tell you about. So a guy called Josh Fox has made a film called Gasland. How many people have seen it? Okay, please don't buy it. <laughs> please don't buy it. Try and find a way of watching it otherwise. But you probably do need to inform yourself. It's a bit like, what, it's a bit like reading the New York Times. I had to give up buying it because I just thought I can't have this in my house. But it's sometimes good to read the New York Times and realize what people think about things and what has been reported as news, which is, you know, basically the front page news stories that are fictionalized. You may as well be going to the movies reading their stories, particularly anything that they write about the environment, by the way. Um, so this guy has made a film called Gasland. I'm going to summarize it very quickly for you. In it, the basic line is that when they started fracking, you start fracking over here. Basically, you stop fancying your wife. The dog falls over. The dog's hair falls out. You, start, you, go, you don't taste peanut butter anymore. You start, your legs start going kind of funny. You start walking to one side. You start falling over, and then your parents both die of cancer within a very short period of time. Well, by the way, people's parents die of cancer, and it's terrible. But everything in your life isn't, isn't happening because of fracking, and it can be proved. So the film is full of very emotional anecdotes and beautiful scenes, and he talks about a town called Dish, Texas, where he says everyone in the town has been poisoned. They all have heavy metal poisoning. They all have carcinogens in the bloodstream because of fracking. Well, the health department from Texas went to Dish, Texas to check that out and found that in that town, four people, four people in the town, had, heavy, had a lot of heavy doses of benzene in their blood. You get benzene in your blood from smoking. Those four people smoked. The rest of the population had the same kind of gunk and good and bad stuff that the rest of us have. And yet that's in the film. In the film they show Dunkard Creek, Pennsylvania. Some of you guys know Dunkard Creek. Dunkard Creek had a fish kill. They show the dead fish. You know those kind of fish. It's like the, it's like the oily duck. They basically have agents in Hollywood, those, those dead fish. So, <laughs> So they show the Dunkard fish, fish kill and they say, Dunkard fish kill, fracking. Well, guess what? No, the Dunkard fish kill was caused by runoff from a coal mine. The other thing that they show in, in, in Gasland is they talk about water contamination. There's water contamination caused by fracking. Well, guess what? Guess what? Lisa Jackson, the head of the EPA and no friend of fossil fuels, said that she knows of no case of water contamination caused by fracking, but yet that's in the film. They go to Dimmock. Pennsylvania. Some of you guys know the Dimmock, Pennsylvania story very well. And I spoke the other day in uh, State College, and there were people in the audience from Dimmock, and by, by the time I was finished, they were all crying, because they thought I was nice, by the way, not because they were like, would she ever stop talking, please? <laughs> <laughs> and the story about Dimmock, Pennsylvania is extraordinary. There are 11 litigants. There are 11 litigants saying that their water was poisoned by a gas company. You know, a litigant, some people in this room have been litigants. You're annoyed, you're angry, something didn't work out for you, so you're feeling really bad. You're not really the best person to tell the story. Well, CNN and Josh Fox and all these antis went to Dimmock, all went to Dimmock. They only met these 11 litigants. Do you know what they missed? They missed 1,500 families in Dimmock who formed a grassroots organization called Enough Already, who said the water was always crap. And the reason that the water was always crap was because 
And, and you know, by the way, there's much more intelligent people here, geologists and engineers, who can explain this better. But because you are such a fortunate land, because you were so lucky, my God, you got lucky, and then you got lucky, and then you got lucky again. You're so lucky that basically the gas just rises up. The Native Americans called towns in America burning springs. Now, why do you think they were called burning springs? Burning springs because the gas just came up and they lit a taper and the water went on fire. And in this film, Gasland, the most, the most impressive moment is a guy lights a taper and everything, big, big flames, which, you, you, wow, it's like wow. Except for the fact that people could always light their water in certain parts of America, but he doesn't say that. In the film, he doesn't say that. So here's the bad news. The bad news is the film is incredibly successful. It's been shown on HBO to the chattering classes about 10 times. It then went on to PBS. Um, it's been shown in schools in your local area. So go out there and cause trouble. I don't believe in banning anything. But if they're going to show Gasland, my God, they need some balance. Because the film is full of lies. Environmentalists are obsessed with impacts. Have you heard this? The impact, the impact. And apparently, solar panels and windmills have no impact at all. Well, here's a news flash. If you love the endangered birds, as the environmentalists apparently do, you can't have the endangered birds with the wind turbines. Doesn't work. Dead birds. Dead birds. And the other problem with the wind turbines is the people who like the wind turbines don't like copper mining. Hmm, well that's a problem because you can't have a wind turbine without an awful lot of copper. Join the dots. They love the solar panels. And my God, I just love the lunacy of, of California where I live. In Southern California, they put the solar panels up on the part of the roof facing the road, even if the house is north facing because they want the neighbours to see the solar panels. And they're driving around, they're driving around in the Prius, they're driving around in the Prius, and I love looking at them and going, ha, 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 you are driving around in a car that's powered by coal, you idiot. <laughs> My simple message is, people, would you please tell the truth? If there's a problem with fracking, we all need to know about it. Just tell the truth. And the people who are anti-fracking aren't. So there's some good news. But calling them out is what we need to do. We have got to call them out. And I have a solution, but I need your help. And if Darren, Nathan, Nathan, wave at me. It's Nathan, isn't it? God save everyone. OK, Nathan, can you play this little piece, please? Oops. With volume, please, Nathan. Canada. Canada. RTE in Ireland. And Polish TV. We've also made two independent documentaries. Mind your own business and not evil just wrong. We want to make a film about fracking. If you haven't heard of it, fracking is a way of extracting oil and natural gas from the ground. It's been around for decades. But now a new documentary by Josh Fox called Gasland has everybody scared. According to the documentary, fracking is poisoning the water. Not only that, they're claiming that it also can make water flammable. Because of these claims, all over America now, there are moratoriums and bans on fracking. So I decided to check out Gasland and these flammable water claims. It turns out people have been lighting their water for centuries in America. There are even places in America called Burning Springs. That's how much gas there is out there. So I decided to ask Gasland director Josh Fox about these claims. Most people watching your film would think that lighting your water started with fracking. You've said yourself, people lit their water long before fracking started. Isn't that correct? Well, yes, but it's not relevant. This was very odd. We decided to put the exchange between Josh Fox and Phelan up on YouTube. Almost instantly, Josh Fox and a bunch of lawyers forced YouTube to take it down. We then put it up on Vimeo. The same thing happened. We thought this was really odd. By the way, both videos are back up again now. The law was on our side. But all this censorship got us really interested in fracking and the truth about fracking. So we went on the road and did a lot of research. We talked to hundreds of people that live right where natural gas is being produced through fracking. And they are very upset, but not because fracking is hurting them. Quite the opposite. 
In their own words, shale gas is the best thing that has ever happened to them. They are upset though because they believe that the story that is being told about fracking is wrong and it threatens their future. These people have tried to tell their story, but up until now have been silenced. The stakes are very high. Shale gas could allow America to be energy self-sufficient and could ensure cheap energy for generations of Americans to come. But it's not only about America. We went to my home country, Poland, and we met with people who spent half their tiny pension on energy costs. Poland now has a chance to make these people's lives better. Until now, we've funded this film ourselves, but we need your help to finish the film. Anyone who contributes, no matter the amount, will become an executive producer on this important documentary. You will be all listed in the credits. Go to kickstarter.com right now and help us to get the truth out about fracking. Thank you. So we launched this campaign about uh, four, um, four weeks ago, and so far we have two and a half thousand names on the credits. I want everyone here to be on the credits. Even one dollar will make a huge difference, because what we're going to try and do is have a huge number of names and say to PBS, this is the people's story. You're not telling the story. You're not telling the truth. CNN went to Dimock and didn't talk to 1,500 families who said the water was okay. The, the, the media will not tell the truth. They will not tell the truth. So please help us to tell this story. Go to fracknation.com, fracknation.com, and become a contributor. Anyone who has an Amazon account, it, it's extremely easy, extremely easy. And we want to put all the names on the credits. This is, this is what we have to do. It's incredible the lengths that people have to go to nowadays to tell the truth. I don't know how many of you knew Andrew Breitbart. <laughs> who is an enormous, enormous loss, enormous loss. I spent the, the, the weekend with him, before, the weekend before he died, and he was as pumped up as, as ever and as, uh, you know, as angry about the media. But his message was so clear. The social media is what they can't control. And I have to say, I remember last night Frank Luntz asked people here who was, on, who was on Facebook and who was on Twitter. And I have to say, going around the country and talking to groups like yourselves, it is super disappointing the fact that you're not involved in the social media. The percentage is ridiculous. They can't shut you up. Do you understand that? They can't stop you on social media. John, what's the name of that CNN woman who got into trouble lately? Yeah, this is how it works. This is how it works. Did I, how many people saw the Soledad O'Brien thing? My God, she disgraced herself, right? She disgraced herself. You, you looked at that, if you were an alien from outer space and you looked at Soledad O'Brien, you thought, oh, she must work for, for the president. I'm serious, you would need to be an idiot not to believe that. So you watch her performance. People started tweeting her. And my husband made a really good point. Prior to that happening, Soledad O'Brien's audience are about 12 people. Most of them are her own relatives. So that every time she finishes a show, she gets lovely tweets. Oh, you look lovely, Soledad. Look at your lovely blouse. Right? And she gets all these really nice tweets. Then she disgraced herself, like really disgraced herself. And she got tweets from me. And she got tweets from thousands and thousands of people like me. She got so many tweets that on live television on CNN, she said, please stop tweeting me. <laughs> Don't you want to be involved in this? Don't you want to annoy Soledad O'Brien? Don't you want to do that? And I, I, I swear, I go around the country and I meet, you know, and these sort of, you know, 90-year-old women saying to me, oh, well, I couldn't tweet my age. Shut up. <laughs> do you care? I mean, you know, people talk, I hear, I hear this rhetoric, fight and bring, get the country back. It's all, it's easy to talk. And it's easy to be here and talk about getting the country back. You've got to do something. You've got to do things. First thing you've got to do is become an executive producer of Frack Nation. <laughs> And I would urge you strenuously to, to, to tweet. When I met this couple from Dimmock, the woman I made cry because she was so thrilled that we were telling her story, I said to her, right now, they're writing about Dimmock on Twitter. Write to them. Get in there in that conversation and say, I live in Dimmock. Her great-grandmother lived in Dimmock. She can talk about the water. And all these elites in New York, all these elites in New York who want to have holiday homes in Pennsylvania, 
who just come for the weekend every now and again, but don't actually live here and don't have the heartbreak of looking at shuttered up towns in some of the most depressed parts of this, of this state who have had such lovely news lately, such wonderful news lately, and it's so great to see those shutters come down. Towns like Williamsport, which were having a hard time, and look at Williamsport now. It's, this is, we feel good about this. And you go across the border, you just go across the border into New York State and how depressed and upset they are. We've interviewed 90-year-old farmers, big massive tears coming down their face. They've had the farm for five and six generations and they're going to lose the farm. And elites from New York telling lies is why they will lose the farm. The gas can save them. And that's how they've said it to us, the gas saved us. This is a great story. Please help us to tell it. Fracknation.com. Thank you. Executive producer John Gizzy already on the list.